Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look at valid anagram. Uh, this problem is a very popular sub problem and uh, variations of it show up a lot in more difficult legal problems. All right, so uh, we'll be taking a look at the intuitive solution for this and then doing a slight bit of optimization to get to our final one, which we'll start to then code out. Uh, let's read the problem. So given two strings, S and T return true. If T is an anagram of S and false otherwise. So this is just going to be uh, Returning a bind, uh, returning a boolean. An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically, typically using all the original letters exactly once. Uh, now that points to the two lengths of the strings being the exact same. If we're using all the original letters exactly once, then that means we don't have any duplicates. We're not missing any, so the lengths have to be the same. So that's going to be a, a little edge case that we can already point out. So in this example, we have S equals anagram and T equals anagram. So uh, these two have the same characters. This is true, even though T is in different, uh, the characters in T are in a different order than in S, you do have the same amount of characters and they show up exactly once. So this is valid. Um, let's say you had anagram and if you had na anagram missing this A, then this would be false. This would be not valid. So uh, let's take a look at how we would actually solve this. So what we'd want to do is we use a hash set or a hash map. And in this hash map, uh, we'll just instantiate it as, as an object. And the key value pairs are going to be uh, the individual characters. So the key would be like A um, or like N um, and the value would be their counts. So A, you see one, two, three times. So this hash map would have A, three times and n it would have it one two times um it would have n twice so that's what our hash map is going to look like um so what we can do is we're a uh, pair count so we're going to set a hash map going through this would be string s and this would be string t so going through string t string s we can iterate it and every time we uh meet a character that we don't that we've not seen before so um our map is going to start out as an empty map uh, but we we hit character A, which we haven't seen before, so we're going to set its count to 1. Then, um, we'll keep going, we hit character N, which we've never seen before, so we'll do the same thing, we'll set the count to 1. And then A, we have seen before, so if we have seen it before, then we're going to increment it by 1, so this will be 2. Um, and then G, R, A, M, do that, so on and so forth. So this is what our hash map is going to end up looking like. <clears throat> It'll have three A's, one M, one N, one, one G, one R, and one M. And then we can do the same exact thing for T where we'll set a new map, um, T, and this would be like, I guess, map S. Uh, and then we can do the same thing where we'll count all the characters. Uh, for each one, we will increase the count by one um, and so on and so forth. And at the end, you'll notice that uh, the maps are actually going to contain exactly the same amount of characters. So, so it, the key value pairs will be exactly the same, um, even though they might not be in the same order. So then what we can do is we can go through each map and we can compare the two uh, to see, you know, if, if, if they're equal to each other. Uh, but this, this gets a little bit tricky. Um, and it's, it's, if we're looking at the complexity, let's, let's take a look, look at the complexity of the solution here. So uh, the time complexity, um, we're only doing two for loops or we'll we'll, do, we'll end up doing three for loops at the very end so we'll do a for loop for um s the characters in s and then we'll do another separate um not connected for loop for all the characters in the t string and then we'll do another character array for all the uh we'll we'll, we'll iterate through the new hash map uh, that contains the characters and the counts for both of these elements so um we'll, we'll have this new hash map but uh, a caveat of the problem is that it only contains lowercase English letters, which means this hash map can be a max size of 26, which is constant and not really something that we want to consider. So uh, the only thing we have to worry about for this time complexity are these two for loops right here. Um, we'll say that these are going to be size n, which means we'll have big O of 2n, which simplifies to big O of n. So this is linear time, which is not that bad. Um, then we can take a look at the space complexity. Uh, for the given example above, we've set two hash maps. So uh, we're going to create a just 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 two hash maps. So we'll have O of two times something. Uh, we know previously because they're only lowercase English English letters, we can only have up to twenty six. So we have O of two times twenty six, which is a constant, and that just simplifies to O of one. Uh, a better way to approach this problem, though, 
uh, we can actually uh, get rid of this two and just end up using one hash set. So I'll show you, I'll show you this solution right right here. Right, so we have a string S anagram and string T nagaram, and we are still going to set a hash map uh, counting all the characters. Because we know that they're the same length, if we iterate through uh, four, then the index I that we're at is um, always going to exist at the, at, in, the, in the T array. So we can just consider uh, one, one iteration we're iterating through four. Um, we're, we're iterating through the length this S array. Now, whenever we see a new character at index I that we haven't seen before in S, then we can continue doing what we've done, which is incrementing it. Uh, we can increment it, we can set it to one. But for T, what we'll do if we've seen a character that we haven't seen before, um, at index at this same index i we've seen n and what we'll do is we'll decrement the characters in t so n will be negative one and then we'll move on we'll let i be uh over here and then we see that there's an n in s which we will increment and this becomes zero and an a in t which we will then decrement now this becomes zero and you'll notice that if we go through the entire length of s array if we go through the entire length of s array uh, and the entire length of T array, and they have exactly the same characters, then no matter what order, uh, at the end, they should all be equal to zero. Uh, and that's how we're going to solve this problem. At the, at the very end, we'll iterate through the map and then figure out if anything doesn't equal zero, we'll return false. Uh, the time complexity is still going to be big O of, um, big o of N, um, and the space complexity is still going to be big O of one, but all this does is uh, it shrinks it from two times 26 just to 26. So um, it's, it's a little bit optimized. Now let's get to the code and see how this actually works. So remember, the first thing we have to do is set the edge case, and that's if either of the links aren't equal to each other. So if s.length is not equal to t.length, then we can just return false off the bat. Now we're going to <clears throat> look at the actual conditions. So we'll let a letter is equal an empty object, and this will serve as our hash map, uh, incrementing and decrementing the counts. Then we're going to iterate through the length of S array. Remember, because their lengths are equal, this means we can access all the elements of both character arrays. And then for this, we'll do two separate if else conditions. So if letters of SI, if this doesn't equal undefined, then we'll increment whatever's in, in it. Um, else, then we will set it equal to one. Uh, and then our second if condition is going to be if letters at T of I, if that doesn't equal undefined, then we're going to decrement it. We decrement every single element of T and we increment every single element's count of S. Uh, then T of I minus minus else letters at T of I is going to equal negative one. Uh, and now if we iterate through the actual map for a constant letter in letters, uh, this is going to take all the all the keys in, in this hash map. Then if this letters at a uh, letter, if, if at any point the value pair for a given key is not equal to zero, then we can return false. Otherwise, if we've gone through the entire loop and we haven't returned anything, that means they're all equal to zero, which is true. That's what we want. So we submit this and this should work. Yep, that's it.